This is morning prayer on Saturday the 28th of November. We're in the season from All Saints Day through to Advent. And later we'll be looking at the Revelation, uh, book of Revelation. And we've noted um, the uh, difficulty it is in reading this book. Um, but uh, we will look at ways in to uh, making sense uh, of it. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Your faithful servants bless you. They make known the glory of your kingdom. Blessed are you, sovereign God, ruler and judge of all. To you be praise and glory forever. In the light of this age that is passing away, may the light of your presence, which the saints enjoy, surround our steps as we journey on. May we reflect your glory this day and so be made ready to see your face in the heavenly city where night shall be no more. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God for ever. As the deer longs for the water brooks, so my soul longs for you, O God. My soul is a thirst for God, even for the living God. When shall I come before the presence of God? My tears have been my bread day and night, while all day long they say to me, Where is now your God? Now when I think on these things, I pour out my soul. How I went with the multitude and led the procession to the house of God with the voice of praise and thanksgiving amongst those who kept holy day. Why are you so full of heaviness, O my soul, and why so disquieted within me? O put your trust in God, for I will yet give him thanks, who is the help of my countenance and my God. Psalm 42. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind in the silence. And as we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Well, we're going to be reading uh, the whole of uh, Revelation chapter 18. Uh, We've been noting um, how difficult it is to read this book and uh, make a head or tail of it. Uh, We've also noted this week uh, that uh, the key uh, is to focus on Christ in the book of Revelation, if the focus is on Christ, not on other areas like the beast or the tribulation or the apocalypse, but on Christ, um, well, then it begins to make sense. Not least because we remember uh, that uh, the uh, readers of the book of Revelation may well have been under intense persecution. So um, here's a a reading, uh, and I'll be reading to you from the Canadian scholar Jean-Pierre Provost this week, uh, who helpfully uh, leads us into Revelation, uh, and uh, here are some more of his words. The final vision of Christ in the book of Revelation, which is in uh, chapter 22, takes us back to the same figure, Alpha and Omega, who invites believers to enter fully into his paschal mystery. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they might have the right to the tree of life, and they may enter the city by its gates. He is the one whose uh, coming uh, the Spirit and the Bride pray for with a heavenly impatience. Come, amen, come, Lord Jesus. Chapter 22, verse 17 and 20. It is no coincidence, um, says um, Prevost, it's no coincidence that the book begins, the book of Revelation, that is, begins and ends with the vision of Christ. From the first vision derives the whole understanding of history presented throughout the book, and from the final vision is born the most fervent hope, which is to inspire Christians as they wait for the return of Christ. If everything begins from the resurrection of Christ, it all moves forward under the inspiration and of the, uh, of the hope for his return. So a, uh, uh, an introduction there. 
uh, that may help us as we come um, for the final time this week uh, into the book of Revelation. And this is Revelation chapter 18. After this, I saw another angel coming down from heaven, having great authority, and the earth was made bright with his splendor. He called out with a mighty voice, fallen, fallen is Babylon the great. It has become a dwelling place of demons, a haunt of every foul spirit, a a haunt of every foul bird, a haunt of every foul and hateful beast. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have grown rich from the power of her luxury. Then I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, so that you do not take part in her sins, so that you do not share in her plagues. For her sins are heaped high as heaven, and God has remembered her iniquities. Render to her as she herself has rendered and repay her double for her deeds. Mix a double draught for her in a cup that she mixed. As she glorified herself and lived luxuriously, so give her a like measure of torment and grief. Since in her heart she says, I rule as queen, I am no widow and I will never see grief. Therefore her plagues will come in a single day, pestilence and mourning and famine, and she will be burned with fire, for mighty is the Lord God who judges her. And the kings of the earth who committed fornication and lived in luxury with her will weep and wail over her when they see the smoke of her burning. They will stand far off in fear of her torment and say, Alas, alas, the great city Babylon, the mighty city, for in one hour your judgment has come. And the merchants of the earth weep and mourn for her since no one buys their cargo anymore. Cargo of gold, silver, jewels and pearls, fine linen and purple and silk and scarlet and all kinds of scented wood, all articles of ivory, all articles of costly wood, bronze, iron and marble, cinnamon, spice, incense, myrrh, frankincense, wine, olive oil, choice flour and wheat, cattle and sheep, horses and chariots, slaves and human lives. The fruit for which your soul longed has gone from you and all your dainties and your splendor are lost to you, never to be found again. The merchants of these wares who gain wealth from her will stand far off in fear of her torment, weeping and mourning aloud. Alas, alas, the great city clothed in fine linen, in purple and scarlet, adorned with gold, with jewels and with pearls. For in one hour all this wealth has been laid waste. And all shipmasters and seafarers and sailors and all who trade on the sea stood far off and cried out as they saw the smoke of her burning. What city was like that great city? And they threw dust on their heads as they wept and mourned, crying out, Alas, alas, the great city where all whose ships at sea grew rich by her wealth, for in one hour she has been laid to waste." Rejoice over her, O heaven, you saints and apostles and prophets, for God has given judgment for you against her. Then a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and threw it into the sea, saying, With such violence Babylon, the great city, will be thrown down and will be found no more. And the sound of harpists and minstrels and of flautists and trumpeters will be heard in you no more. And an artisan of any trade will be found in you no more. And the sound of the millstone will be heard in you no more. And the light of a lamp will shine in you no more. And the voice of a bridegroom and bride will be heard in you no more. For your merchants with, were the magnets of the earth, and all the nations were deceived by your sorcery, and in you was found the blood of prophets, of saints, and all who have been slaughtered on this earth. Again, we remember as we read the book of Revelation, we have this backdrop of the brothers and sisters under trial uh, who are being persecuted uh, and the author is pointing them resolutely to the figure of Christ dead and risen again who will 
triumph over all and therefore is giving them great hope. The key to Revelation is to focus on the Christ of Revelation and the victory that he wrought. That brings us to the um, uh, Song of Zechariah. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us pray to the Lord, who is our refuge and our stronghold. We pray for the health and well-being of our nation and all who are fearful and anxious who live in it, may be at peace and free from worry. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for the isolated and housebound that we may be alert to their needs and care for them in their vulnerability. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for our homes and families, our schools and young people, and all in any kind of need or distress. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for a blessing on our local community that our neighbourhoods may be places of trust and of friendship. And all are known and cared for in our vicinity. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We commend ourselves and all for whom we pray to the mercy and protection of God. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. That brings us to our collect for this day. Eternal Father, whose Son, Jesus Christ, ascended to the throne of heaven, that he might rule over all things as Lord and King. Keep the church in the unity of the Spirit and in the bond of peace. And bring the whole created order to worship at his feet, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And uniting our prayers with the whole company of heaven, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. May Christ who has opened the kingdom of heaven bring us to reign with him in glory. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.